Super excited to share with you a brand new coat pattern that has amazing fitting features. And if it's daunting for you to sew a coat, no worries because I'm gonna take you through from start to finish all the sewing. You'll be able to do it, I promise, and you'll feel great when you've made such a project like this for yourself. Here's a quick sneak peek of my fabric. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and I'm super excited to share my coat with you today. It's been a long time in the makes. This is a brand new pattern from Each to Stitch called the Legan Coat. And we were testing this pattern months ago in February. So when Kenneth made the testing course, she let us know that this is a project that was gonna be released for early autumn. Northern Hemisphere. Yeah, we all had to have a lot of patience to just keep it there and not share it with anyone. You know, we've all been wearing them and these coats are amazing. As always, a really supportive testing environment and lots of the testers there had never made a coat before. So it was a very, very nice experience to have. I'll show you some photos of Kenneth. She's the owner and designer of his stitch patterns. You can really see the features of the coat there because she made it in a solid, of course. The legging coat is fully lined. There are no shortcuts here. It's got the highest quality sewing techniques in here. It's very, very beautiful on the inside and on the outside. There is a bodice with a waistband. The bottom of the waistband hits the natural waist and then above you have princess seams on the front and the back. These princess seams originate from the shoulder, so they're not the curved ones from the armhole, they're from up here. And I love those, I think those are really easier to fit than the other ones. Between the front and the back, there is a small shoulder yoke right there, a fitting feature too. Below the waistband, there are skirt pieces, or just the bottom of the coat, slightly A-lines. There's two pieces per side, four pieces, and on the back as well. It's meant to hit the knee. There are five buttons down the center front. And here on the top, there is a collar with a collar stand. Very, very interesting to put together. Just the way all the pattern pieces are constructed. Some of them are interfaced. There's a back stay to help support the back. There's a sleeve head inside. You use a little shoulder pad. It's just an amazing coat. For all you pocket lovers, there are side seam pockets, inseam pockets that are anchored at the waistline. So because they are the type of inseam pockets that I like, I didn't go through much pain to actually make these pockets. Although if it hadn't have been a pattern test, I'm sure I wouldn't have made the pockets. I'm gonna be wearing a handbag, but there you go. I have pockets there and I'm not sad about them. They are nice. They are very nice. You can't see that they're there. I've just described to you all the features and you might be pulling your hairs and thinking there's no way I can do that. But I have great news. I have filmed the entire process from start to finish. Back in February when I was sewing this, I took a whole week to film and sew. It took me that long, I have all the footage. I'm going to be editing all this footage into three more videos. This is part one, which is the overview and review of the pattern. Then comes part two, three and four, which will include all the sewing. If you watch all this, you will be able to make it. I promise, take it one seam at a time and I've got your back, I'm here to support you. So you can make your very first coat. It's an amazing achievement. You will feel so great about yourself and you'll have a different outlook to other projects. You'll think, you know, I've made a coat, I can make anything now. You'll be able to see exactly what to do, you'll understand and you'll be able to do it. I promise you 100%. It is a new pattern, so during the first week, it will have a discount, a good time to get it for a little bit less and you can find my affiliate link down below in the description box. If you'd like to support my work that way, when you purchase through there, you don't pay anything extra, but a little bit of that sale comes back to me as commission and supports the work that I do here. Thank you so, so much for supporting me through my affiliate link. It means the world to me. Thank you so much. You need some medium to heavyweight type of woven material. Wool coating would be a traditional type of material you, you can use, whether it's 100% wool or a wool blend, a wool mix, and you can find different weights. You can also use non-stretch fleece. And for a lighter coat, I think you can use a heavy linen or a gabardine, I think would work amazing as well. It was always my intention to make a lightweight coat. I wasn't looking for the thickest of wool. Even if I wanted to make those, I don't know where I would go and find that type of fabric because it just doesn't get that cold here. I did find a special fabric for this project and I'm over the moon about it. It's so unique. It's a herringbone weave. It's just light to medium weight, I would say. It's a wool blend, so there is wool and polyester in there. And the fabric looks like it's been painted on top with some sort of gold paint. I'm not sure. It's gorgeous. It's just 
of the most beautiful fabric I'd ever seen and just getting ready to make it I could see it in my head and yeah amazing I'm very happy with my fabric choice although originally I was always thinking of making one in linen I'm glad I found something that looks more traditionally coat looking than linen linen would be amazing as well I think other than your main fabric you need lining fabric I wouldn't use anything that doesn't have a slippery texture so don't use cotton cotton lawn that sort of thing it's not going to work well for the lining you're just going to get stuck in there especially on the sleeves i don't have access to linings like rayon bemberg or stuff like that i just use poly satin it works every time i can find it easily and i've chosen a purple color i'm not going to be opening my coat to show everyone the lining i'm not about using prints in lining it's not for me but i know a lot of people like adding their own little twist in there to have their own little secret inside the lining mine's just a purple lining other notions that you need are two different types of interfacing one would be a light knit trickle interfacing so it would be the type that you stretch that you would use to interface partially some of knit projects those are the ones that you are going to use to stabilize the hems of all the pattern pieces for the skirt, for the sleeves. So you need that type of interfacing and then you need a lightweight interfacing that doesn't stretch. A tailor's interfacing, I have a very lightweight one because with that one you are going to interface a lot of the pattern pieces, mainly the waistband and all the front pieces for the coat are fully interfaced. As well as the facing and the collar pieces, you use quite a lot of interfacing here. You need a small piece of cotton, it doesn't matter what color it is, no one will ever see it because it's going to be inside the coat, inside the lining. And it's for a small pattern piece that is going to stabilize the back shoulder, neckline, and about half of that. So any, any scrap that you might have around is going to work. The sleeve head is a piece that will be inside and will give support to the shoulder seam and the sleeve seam. And you can cut that out of the main fabric or felt. I don't have access to felt, so I just use the same fabric I was using for the coat. Trying to keep this video nice and varied. I wanted to talk a little bit about pre-washing or pre-treating your fabric if you're using something that has wool in it. It's not like the typical fabric that you just throw into the wash. And if you use a dryer, you throw into the dryer, you know, it's not the same thing. So depending on the type of wool material that you're using, you might get extreme shrinking or maybe none at all. Maybe if you're using boiled wool, the process of making the wool like that, it's weaved so tight, the shrinking will be minimal once you start using it and steaming it and all those things. But if you're using a wool crepe or a boucle that's more loosely woven, once you start fiddling with it, it'll start shrinking. Like you start applying steam when you're ironing, it'll just start shrinking. So you need to do something about that. You can search the edges. One expensive way to pre-treat your wool is to send it to the dry cleaners. Just send all your yardage and they'll sort it out. Then you'll be sweet. Another one is to do it yourself. Now I have never done this. I don't have a dryer. So I'm just telling you what I've seen and what people say that works. Is getting your wool, surging the edges, getting two or three damp towels and putting that in the dryer just to tumble with the damp towels for about 30 minutes and that's like a steam sort of treatment there and that will get the wool to shrink and then you can work with it. Another way is to just hold out your yardage and put your iron and just steam it like an inch away, just steam it, steam it. Or if you have a hand steamer that you use for your clothes, that's gonna work as well. That is the option that I did with my wool. Although I knew my wool wouldn't react violently because it is a wool blend, there is polyester in there, so that will prevent a lot of the shrinking as well. But I did hold out my yardage and I did just use my iron and just make it really damp and I just threw a lot of steam on there and then just left it on the table to dry flat. Don't hang it, it's gonna deform. So that is the way I pre-treated my fabric. Definitely, I would not just throw it in the machine. I would be really, really scared to do that. I wouldn't do that, yeah. I would send this to the dry cleaner. You know, there's not many clothes that I do send, but if it's a coat that I made with all the time and all the love, it's worth it. I would send it to the dry cleaner afterwards. I wouldn't try to just try to spot clean it or do things to it myself. Sizes available are from double zero to 40 US. So it's a great size range. 
sizes 00, 0 to 20 have A through double D cup sizes, sewing cup sizes, and then sizes 22 to 40 have from B to double D cup sizes. You choose your sewing cup size based on the difference between your high bust and your full bust. There's a little diagram there so you can see, you measure yourself, find out what your sewing cup size is. It's got nothing to do with the letters that you see in your bra. Always remember that, measure yourself and find out. I am a sewing C cup size and have been consistently, I've been using this sewing cup size for each to stitch patterns with great results. Because this is a garment that is intended to be worn over things, you're going to have other garments under there. It is a garment for cold weather. There is a nice amount of ease at the bust, about seven inches, about six inches at the waist, about 11 inches at the hips. So taking that into account, Kenneth said, you know, if you are trying to make a lightweight coat that you are going to wear with just one little garment under there, which is my case, use one size less. My original size here would be a 14 bust with a C cup up to the waist and then blend out to a 16 at the hip. But because my coat is going to be a light coat, it's a light material and I'll be using something very light, just one layer underneath, I decided to do the whole thing and size one down. So I've made a 12 C cup blended to a 14 hip and I'm very very happy with that. You'll find extensive finished pattern measurements because there is a separate bodice with a waistband and your natural waist should hit the bottom of that waistband. I thought it was really really important to see those measurements. For the back there's a nape to back waist length and then from the waistband down what the skirt length was. I knew immediately that I was going to need to lengthen my coat so that it hits above the knee. It was just going to be too short for me. I am two inches taller than the five foot six that each to stitch drafts for and I can really tell in the bottom sections. So I'm showing you here the main pattern pieces what I did to adjust for the sleeve pieces the upper sleeve and the under sleeve because this is a two-piece sleeve. I added one and a half inches at the short and the length and line just added my length and then made the line smooth to make sense and then for the main pieces of the bodice for the front and the back i did not need to add anything i am short waisted you know it fit me perfectly i am taller so in theory i would need to lengthen bodices but i don't it's because my length is short here and from the waist down that's where my length is so that's why bodices usually are okay for me but from the skirt down for both the front pieces there's two of them for the front two for the back at the short and the lengthened line at the bottom, I added my three inches. There are short and lengthened lines on all the pieces of the bodice as well. If you needed to make them shorter or longer, you'll find an exact line where to add that. Because the facing goes all the way from here down to the bottom, of course I needed to add length to the facing. You can see that I did that on the bottom short and lengthened line so that everything makes sense. So if I'm adding to the main pieces, you need to consider that there's lining inside you do something to the main pieces you also need to do the same to the lining so here you can see the lining pieces where I added the length to the skirt pieces not to the bodice pieces and also to the lining pieces of the sleeve by going down one size I compared you know what is going to be the difference how much less ease am I going to have it's about one inch less ease at the bust the waist and the hips and that's perfectly fine for me I want to talk a little bit about the muslin process please make one Look, I've just used this curtain type material. It's medium weight, it doesn't stretch, it's got little characters on it. It achieved the purpose of checking fit. I'm gonna put this on and we'll talk a little bit about it. Make sure that when you're trying on your muslin, you're wearing the type of garment that you intend to wear with your coat so that you know that you're gonna have the appropriate amount of ease. If you're gonna wear a big sweater underneath, try it on with a big sweater so that you're happy. In my case, I just have a simple black dress because that's what I'm gonna wear with my coat. I mean that type of garment. So let's see more about this. I have my non-wearable muslin on and I just wanted to talk a little bit about a muslin process. Now this pattern has princess seams, it has a waistband that the bottom of the waistband should hit the waist. So there are a lot of fitting features there that are going to help you get a really good fit. If the princess seams don't fit right or the waist height is too long or too short, it's just not going to be a right fit and it's not going to be comfortable either. So do not go ahead and get your nice wool fabric and just make it and hope for the best. There's a lot of time and resources involved in making a garment that's not going to fit you correctly. Maybe it might fit you correctly, but how are you going to know? <laughs> so from the get-go, I knew I was going to make something just like an outer shell, something non-wearable 
with a, just a random non-stretch fabric. I'm not being very specific here. If you're very confident in making pattern adjustments and flat pattern measurements, you can measure your pattern really carefully and find out what your fitting issues might be. You might have vertical issues with fit. And I have a video showing you how to measure all your vertical lengths, you know, from the nape of the shoulder to the bust, to the waist, front and back. Those are things that you might want to check in a pattern before you make a muslin. I'll leave you a thumbnail here that will help you with that. That video is aimed at sewing tops, but the way that we measure ourselves and compare to a pattern will be exactly the same. So taking that approach, I already went and corrected my bust height. So you can see I have princess seams coming from the shoulder and going right there. This is my bust height. I had to lower it by three quarters of an inch. If I don't lower this bust point and just make it as it is, the bust point on the coat will be higher. And then down lower, it's gonna feel tighter and I'm gonna have a lot of space bunching up there. So in the same way that you need to adjust a buster, if there is one, you do need to adjust princess seams if it's a fitting issue that you have Typically, I already have a video on the channel that shows you how to adjust the bust height on a princess seam garment. It's a dress that has the same type of princess seams that come from the shoulder, the callus bell from each to stitch. So I will leave you a thumbnail here so you can find this video. I will link all these resources down below. And it's something that you can do before you even make your muslin, if you're willing. Also checking the waist height. When I measured from here down to the bottom of the waistband, I felt that the pattern was going to fit me correctly and it makes total sense because even though I'm much taller than the drafted height, I do have a short torso, a short waist. So usually patterns drafted for shorter women fit me really correctly at the waist. Might not be your case, you might have an even shorter torso or longer depending on your height. Then things like adding length to the sleeves and adding length to skirt are a given because I'm just taller. So I wasn't worried about those things. I was mainly worried about fitting this. In the pattern it says, use a size less if you're meaning to make a lighter coat for mild weather and you're just gonna wear something really light underneath. That's what I've done because I'm just usually gonna wear a light dress under there, usually something sleeveless and something very thin under my coat. I'm not gonna be wearing a thick sweater, a turtleneck, anything really thick under there or two layers. I'm not planning to do that because my winters just don't get cold like that. But you might have cold winters. If you want to make a proper thick woolly coat to wear in actual winter in snow, then just make the size that you're meant to make and you have the correct amount of ease. By sizing down, I lose about an inch of ease at the bust, waist and hips. And that's perfect for me. I'm going to wear something light underneath and I'm perfectly happy with that. Also, when you are making your muslin, mark along the front where the button holes and the buttons are going to be so that when you try your muslin on, you can overlap this correctly and know that it fits you. If you just eyeball this and just let it hang and you like overlap it a little bit, you might think it's fine, but think about the seam allowance you're gonna lose here in the center front on both sides where you saw on your facing and all of that. So don't eyeball that, overlap it correctly with your reference marks and pin it to make sure that you're happy with the fit and that everything's going to cross over nicely and you're going to be happy with the amount of ease. Up here on the top there's a little shoulder yoke piece that divides the front and the back. There you can see the princess seam and the back starts at the shoulder as well, same as the front. The sleeve here I think fits correctly for me. This area is going to be supported by a sleeve head and a small shoulder pad and those are needed to give this area structure. There'll be a collar right here and I'll lower the camera so you can see the feet down below. Okay, here I have my coat overlapped correctly like it's meant to be. It's really nice, I like that. I think the princess seams are fitting correctly. And at the back, the bottom of the waistband is actually right at the small of my back, right where it has to be. It's not higher, it's not lower. I'm very happy with that. And that is mainly what I wanted to check with the fitting right here. Same as here on the front. If I put my hands on my waist, that's where the bottom of the waistband is once sewn. Then we have skirt pieces here. There's four pieces on the front, two per side, as you can see. At the back, there's also four pieces gives a lot of shaping. I added three inches to the skirt so that it hits above the knee as you can see there otherwise the coat would have been like this and I don't like wearing short coats where you can see a little bit of dress underneath. I really dislike that and I mainly wear things with dresses. With pants it doesn't matter but I really wanted my coat to be right above my knee. 
the sleeve is good i just need to hem it and then the length will be perfect so here i turn my muslin right sides out so you can see the print a little bit i'm really happy how this is going to fit i've got the correct overlap i've got the correct length the bodice is going to be correct and i'm really really happy to cut my project at this point i mentioned that there's two approaches to making a muslin and i talked a lot about making my own flat pattern measurements checking the pattern and making the adjustments on the paper before sewing the muslin so in my case my muslin is to confirm that my pattern adjustments are correct or that maybe i can almost get it almost almost there you know so i can make small tweaks on the muslin if you're not accustomed to doing flat pattern measurements or you're newer to sewing and you don't really know how to go about that you can go the other route which might be a little lengthier which is just choose your size based on your measurements there make a muslin as is put it on and then see look you know my waist is too high my waist is too low my bust apex is too high my I, my bust apex is too low i've got the sleeves are too long my skirt you know then you can see on your body what you need to change and you would pin 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 until you can adjust that and then translate all those findings onto your paper pattern so it would be the inverse way that i do it each way will work in my case if i went this route i would want to make a muslin again <laughs> just to make sure. You know, if you're making a coat out of a nice expensive wool, you don't want to be playing around and just, just hoping for the best, crossing your fingers. So yeah, in that case, I would probably end up making two muslins. In my approach where I do adjustments before making the muslin, usually the one muslin is going to be okay and it's going to be enough. But both approaches will work. Don't think that if you're making two muslins, you're wasting your time, you're not. You know, it's all towards getting a coat that will fit you amazing. And the base of the feet, the way it's been drafted, I mean, you've already got a really high quality pattern there. You just need to make small tweaks for your body, mainly for length issues, I believe. So making it is always worth it. I would not skip it, especially for a garment like this. I'm going to show you my coat. I'm so excited about it. It's got a brassy type of gold tones there. This is my collar, nice and pointy. Everything's top stitch by three eighths. There is a collar stand in there that you can see. It fits really well on the neck and the shoulders. It's so, so good right there. It's not huge like those coats from the 70s either. Oh, the bugs. And then you have the center front that is straight down. There's a section there on its own and there is the buttonhole, the first one. So you can button this up all the way up to the top if you wanna be extra warm, which is not my case. <laughs> there is the little shoulder yoke that is between the front and the back pieces. You can see the shoulder seams coming from there for the princess seams. All the seams are top stitched flat, very nicely, super nice. And inside, you won't see it, there is a sleeve head a piece of the same main fabric holding this up and that's why the sleeve sort of rolls it makes it look really nice i have a really thin shoulder pad inside there as well the front bodice has two pieces the center front the side princess seams both sides the waistband separates the bodice from the skirt pieces you can see it there with the button right in the middle and then at the back you have a center back seam and the princess seams on the sides and then for the skirt pieces at the back as well, there's four pieces. There's quite a lot of pieces. I like that because the more pieces, the more shaping you can have. So I'm all about that. The sleeves have two pieces. So that is the seam that goes at the back right there. Always these sleeves that have two pieces give you a better shape. Give you like that bend that your arm naturally has compared to a sleeve that only has one piece. So the ones that don't have two pieces tend to twist a little. That's what's going to happen to every single sleeve happens less with these and then the length is just above my knee voila there is my lining it's beautiful the way it's finished inside is super nice it's sewn onto the facing there is a little pleat right there there is a center back pleat on the lining there always needs to be one and that pleat goes all the way to the waist seam of the lining at the bottom really hard to show but there's vertical ease on the lining if i move this up you can see it's not tight that's how lining is supposed to be when you walk, you never want the lining to be pulling up your coat. So I really enjoy the techniques in this pattern because they are the techniques I learned decades ago with my great aunt. She sold really high quality pieces back, back, back in the day. And the way that she taught me how to line, it's the way I've been doing it, leaving vertical ease, having a bit more ease inside the lining with a pleat. And I don't see that in some patterns that I find, 
but it's here, so I love it. There is lining everywhere, even inside the sleeves. If I can turn this around a little bit. I'm just so proud of this make, it's just so amazing. The main fabric has a lot of pattern pieces, you know, princess seams, all of that. The lining pieces are not like that. So the shaping you get in the lining is with darts. So there are waist darts right there. There is a facing that attaches to the lining. It's been edge stitched. You don't have the yoke there on the lining either. It's just very simple inside. On the front, you have a waist dart and a little pleat up here. And then the skirt pieces are very simple. Just a front and a back. So it's much more simplified inside. So beautiful. So beautiful with the purple inside as well. I really wanted to have that purple in there. Just as my own little thing, you know, I've been really into purple this year. I had that purple lining, so why not? <laughs> there are five buttonholes. They have quite a lot of distance between them. If it hadn't have been a pattern test, I probably would have put more buttons because my bust apex actually does not have a button across it. It just wasn't placed there. I'm never gonna wear this coat closed. <laughs> I'm gonna wear it open all the time. And I have wooden buttons right there. Quite nice large wooden buttons. To stabilize the buttons, I have a small button at the back to keep them nice and secure. Quite a lot of layers through to sew on your buttons. And that little button at the back will keep it stable. And it's gonna make it last for longer without falling off. So happy. Let's see how this one looks on. Simple styling, a simple black dress and a little purple scarf. Shoes, that's it. This is my new legging coat from Itch to Stitch. I've made mine in a lighter wool suiting material. It's a type of herringbone with splashes of golden paint. From far away, it looks like a golden coat and I absolutely love it. I think it'll go with everything. I really like the design and the way it's been drafted to fit you really, really well. It's got front and back princess seams that come from the shoulder. There is a waistband that hits right at the natural waist. The skirt pieces are slightly A-lined. You have some buttons down the center and a collar with a collar stand. I think this is an outstanding coat with an amazing fit and I'm very happy with it and I'll show you the details up closer. I have a size 12 C cup blended to a 14 waist and 14 hip. It was advised if you were making a lighter weight coat that you were just going to use a light layer that you size down one. So my normal sizes would be 14, 16. And at the bottom, I just have a really light dress. It's how I would dress in the winter. I'm gonna open it up for you. All of the seams have been top stitched with 3 8 seam allowance. I think it really highlights the features of the coat. It's really pretty. And you can see up closer how this fabric is so, so nice. I made a muslin, of course, to check that the back waist height was going to be correct, and it is correct. On the side, you have inseam pockets here, and they are very neat. Everything's understitched, you know, you're not gonna see the pocket really. You can't even see that it's there. It's got a nice amount of space and I've got purple lining in there so you can put your hands in your pocket. I made a muslin first and most of the adjustments had to do with my height. I have extra three inches added to the skirt so that it hits above my knee or else it would have been too short for me. And I have extra one and a half inches on the sleeves so that it's length on me. Princess seams, I've lowered the bust height by three quarters of an inch and those are all the adjustments I needed. The bodice height was perfect for me, didn't need to change anything there. The coat is fully lined, I have this poly satin lining inside that then I like purple so why not but it's not like I'm going to be flashing my lining to everyone you know. You can see this collar, it's got a collar stand in there, it has a small section that is on its own and that's where you have the first button. It lies really nicely, not that hard to sew. I think in my life I would never fully button up anything, but there is a button there if you live in cold weather and you really want to be extra warm. You can use the button all the way up to the top to have all this area closed off, but I would wear it open. You can see that the princess seams originate at the shoulder and then go over the bust right there. I have a C cup. There are A, B, C, D and double D cup sizes. There is a small shoulder yoke piece between the front and the back. It's also top stitched. And my sleeve and my shoulder fits amazingly. There is a sleeve head inside that gives support and I have a really thin shoulder pad as well. You can't skip the shoulder pad. It does give structure to this area and it doesn't make me look like a football player or anything like that. It just makes a garment like this that's tailored 
lie correctly. At the back, there's also princess seams coming from the shoulder. There is a waistband piece uniting the bodice to the skirt pieces. It goes all the way around. Then the lining pieces inside are much more simple. You don't have all the princess seams and those things inside in the lining. It's being drafted in a different way, but it still fits amazing inside. It's very nice inside. Super, super happy with my coat. I promise you it's not as hard as it looks. And you can see all the steps of the sewing on my channel. I'm gonna have a full sew along. So you can have a lot of support to make your own beautiful coat. And if you really want to make one for yourself, you're going to feel so empowered that you can do something like that. I love mine. It's so pretty. <laughs> it's so special. Especially this fabric. It's just one of a kind. I know no one's going to have a coat like mine. Really love it. And I encourage you to make yourself your own coat. You'll feel amazing when you're done. Now remember, I'm going to be sharing all the sewing with you. I'm going to be doing that in separate videos or else this one is going to be excessively long. There is no way I could incorporate all this pattern review and all the overview and the sewing. It would be like a two hour long video. So I'm going to be making three more videos that will take you from the very beginning to the very end. I will separate them in sections so that when you make your coat, you can see exactly how to do it. It's my gift to you. I do a similar process every month on Patreon for my my orchid subscribers and they commit to a monthly fee to support my work and that's what I do as a reward for them so I don't usually do this for the channel but this is an exception I really did want to sew everything as a gift to you just to give you that extra support so that you can make yourself a coat you will feel amazing like you can sew anything after you finish the project like this it's really empowering and I just want to be there to support you so remember the videos are coming Saturday, Sunday, Monday evening, they will come out. The whole series will be finished by Monday. I will leave a playlist down below with all the videos there so you can click there and you can keep finding them on that same link as I keep uploading them. Turn on your notifications so you don't miss out when they come up. And I really hope you enjoy it. You can do it, it's not as hard. Just take it seam by seam and you'll be able to complete it. Remember, I have my affiliate link down below as well so you can get your pattern through there. It doesn't cost you anything extra and I get a small commission that comes back to me to support the work that I do here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again very soon. Just look out for episode two, three and four of the leg and coat sewing. You're going to really enjoy it. I will leave you with photos with another outfit so you can see it styled in a different way and I'll say goodbye now. Bye. Don't you think this is starting to